Gorilla Geek going 10-8. Okay guys, let's take this uh, SUV looking vehicle here and install some radios into it. So what we have here is a Chevy Tahoe and so far it's been outfitted with a cage and we have the plate here to mount a uh, center console here on the on the middle part of the vehicle here to install our radios so this installation here would would be similar to what a ham will do to his vehicle or any other a CB uh, scanner usually you'll take your ham radio or CB or scanner and mount it right underneath the dash here or on the side here or uh, sometimes the uh, control head the, the, the face plate of it will detach from the radio itself and you could just attach it to your dash up here or what have you but uh oh crap but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to supersize this installation and I'm going to install four radios uh, and take you through the steps and what I do here can directly translate into doing your your amateur CB scanner type installation on your vehicles with a little bit difference here and there but the the basic principles are always going to be the same so right here we got like this uh, mounting plate down here that's specific to this vehicle and and it's somewhat customizable I mean it, it, it's got a uh, pretty good uh, railings on there where you could change the directions up and down or whatever to fit whatever vehicle that you're having on there and we're gonna mount the, a console unit center console unit on top of this plate here and here's some variations of uh, different sizes of the uh, center console you have this small one right here that'll fit a good you know regular cab uh, pickup or something like that or a sedan then you have your big boy here and it's angled and you could put some more stuff on there uh, the manufacturer of this is uh, called uh, Troy Built and they have uh, different face plates for different radios for this one here's a scanner and this older uh, GE sort of uh, control head there you can put cup holders there or uh, what do you call it a little vault a locked container and what have you there's another smaller one there and then there's another big boy right down there so here comes the uh, console it's just a matter of just laying it right here in the middle It's very adjustable. I can have it all the way up this way or all the way back this way just depending on how you want to set it up. So what I want to do is I want to make sure it's not hitting my knees or anything. I can have this pushed all the way up this, that way. It'll give me some room to put stuff down here. Some clearance for my microphone. I got clearance for my uh, flashlight and my passenger which I don't really care about and I think this will be the correct location I have access to my controls over here be it a little bit awkward over here but uh, that's okay I think this is going to be the a good location there and I got a little space here to rest my arm I guess when I'm driving and then it's just bolted down by uh, carriage bolts uh, right inside here so there it is it's all mounted all securely on this uh, bottom plate that's uh, custom to this uh, vehicle and here I have my flashlight holder and just make sure everything just comes in and smoothly not interfering with everything and the number one cardinal rule that should you should follow always is when you're installing a console or a radio or anything in your cab here do not I mean do not get in the way of the coffee holder 
this vehicle doesn't have one here in this location so I'm safe but if there's like a little pull out for your drinks or something do not block it you'll hate life uh, all the vehicles that I've installed that's the number one thing that I look out for because I know later on the guys are gonna come up to me and say hey you blocked my coffee holder where am I gonna put my coffee at so that is the number one rule if, if you want to stay in the in good graces of your customers or, or yourself or whatever so I don't have one here in this vehicle but uh, I'll fix that pretty soon but uh, so it doesn't matter to me but in in all seriousness here I have uh, 12 volt uh, outputs here cigarette uh, power power plugs here and my controls for the climate and all that and I have um, I'm able to go in there and this is one unit that I have here and that fits in there just right so I'm not in the way of these devices here okay next step is power distribution how you're gonna power up your radios uh, usually you could bring just one pair of wires to your radio if you only have one radio and you're fine with that but I'm powering more than one device so I'm gonna need more juice to go to the cab back there so our standard procedure is to use number six gauge uh, wire and sorry for the shakiness and that's uh, this block right here this wire right here is six gauge wire and I have a big maxi fuse here uh, we'll put in I think it's 40 amps 40 to 60 amps uh, big block fuse here you always want to fuse on this as close to the battery as possible so if there's anything that goes wrong it breaks it over here and not inside your cab because if you got your fuse inside the cab and you have a short before that fuse between here and that fuse that wire is going to heat up is going to catch your pulsary on fire and your whole vehicle is just going to go up in flames and so whenever this line here is, is shorted out inside the cab for whatever reason it's going to blow up here in the engine compartment all fuses should be uh, done in the uh, engine compartment with some exceptions so and it's and I have it in this loom here and this loom is uh, temperature rated for higher uh, temperatures because it's inside the engine block and there's my number six gauge wire so right down there in the engine block I have my ground to the radio system and that's being fed over here on this loom over here and then it combines it with the uh, the positive and the positive and negative so uh, all your powering to the radio should be directly connected directly to the battery itself not tapped off in a fuse box anywhere your ground should be located all the way up to the battery in this case is going over to the engine block which is a pretty good ground by itself right there uh, to prevent ground loops and ground loops uh, if that's if you're connecting that ground like inside the the vehicle body inside the cab for for uh, ease or anything like that but it, it's going to cause some problems where you might pick up some interference or make you do some goofy stuff uh, on law enforcement vehicles sometimes that will cause your lights to go kind of haywire uh, interference on the radio if you transmit on the radio it's going to cause the lights to go on and off sometimes yeah, so just to avoid all that all that stuff is just rooted to directly to the battery itself and then what I would need too is a point to have switch power uh, when, when you turn on your vehicle that would be your switch power and uh, that signal is located with this is going to be used with this green wire here and I'm just going to tap off one of these fuses here that has 12 volt switch power using your your ignition key so inside the cab there's my two number six gauge wires directly from the battery and this one will be directly from the uh, engine block the ground it's not connected to the body or or any of these mountain mounting uh, hardware or anything like that directly to the, to the battery that is important uh, get into into the habit of doing that 
and this green wire is my switched accessory wire so those are my three power distribution wires that I need to power up the radios here I have four antenna cables I have four NMO mounts mounted on the top of the vehicle itself and that's how many radios I'm going to put on here so here's the distribution block that I'm going to put inside the vehicle uh, it's just regular wood uh, less than 8 by 5 or 8 by 11 less than that uh, here you have a row of power strips that you could put fuses on and then your, here's your regular main lug my main power from the battery is going to go to this lug here and it's going to make all this strip here hot all the time now this here is uh, your accessory switch power so what's going to happen is that green wire that comes in is going to go to this relay here this relay here one of the poles is going to be hooked up to positive uh, constantly constantly hot and you can see the yellow wire here feeding into one of the uh, poles of the of the uh, of the relay then that other the other end of the relay when it's activated is hooked up to this terminal switch when you have an accessory when you turn on your ignition and that accessory power comes on is going to is going to activate this relay this is a 40 amp relay then this 40 amp relay is going to close making a connection from constant hot to this terminal strip here then all of these guys will turn hot when you turn on the ignition switch so this is going to feed into my radios here because uh, some radios like the public safety radios and stuff they need an ignition switch or it, it could be configured the way however you want it you want it to turn on constantly or not but I like it to to turn on when when I turn my ignition on and then when I leave the vehicle it'll turn off and, and it's hooked up to this yellow wire so this yellow wire here senses that power from my switch power here and I only need it's only a signaling power it doesn't need like a whole lot of juice one amp less than one amp to just tell it that hey the, the accessory light is on or the accessory switch is on turn on the radio that's that signal for that yellow wire there and then the main power this guy right here is hooked up to the constantly hot switch there so this is just a, a, a signal to let the radio know to turn on because there, there's power uh, to the switch and that'll turn on that radio that's one configuration that's pretty prevalent in the public safety uh, professional side of the house hams CB and, and all others you'll find you'll, you'll see this particular configuration just your hot and your ground but so if I hook it up to this strip here the constantly hot strip I would have to go through more steps to turn my ham radio on and off I would have to go to the faceplate and turn it off but I don't want to do that as soon as I turn off the vehicle I want uh, I want that radio to turn off and this is my Alinco, uh ham radio here so instead of putting my hot lead over to the constantly powered strip here this is going to go into my switch accessory strip here this is this can handle 40 amps the radio won't do no more than 13 amps so I'm safe to put this over to this terminal strip and have the radio powered through the terminal strip this terminal strip so when I turn the ignition on is going to activate this relay to make all this hot and thus this is going to turn on my ham radio so that's one way to have some sort of uh, ignition switched radio if I want it to be hot all the time and me going through the faceplate to turn it on on and off all the time then yeah I, I would hook it up to this side of the uh, terminal strip so this is constantly hot ignition sense hot and with the relay it, it just gives me more options because a lot of these modern vehicles they don't have a lot of breakouts for this or a lot of uh, ignition sense uh, lines so this scheme here will enable you to have more options and more uh, powering 
capabilities rather than what the vehicle came standard with. This device here, now what I've said before is not including this device here. What this device does, it's an auxiliary power controller. You, you'll have your, your ground and your battery voltage come in. That's to kind of power up the unit itself and, and to sense you know, what's going on and be working all the time. And then you have your negative coil for your relay here. So this plug here is going to feed your relay. Then you have your regular accessory coming from your vehicle feeding into this device. So what this will do is when you turn on the ignition, it's going to, the device is going to sense it and then it's going to signal the relay to activate, to activate your, your accessory panel uh, power here. When you turn off your vehicle, it'll, it'll turn the device off, but this is a timer. You can set this to have a delay of uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 2 hours. So after you turn off your vehicle, all, all your devices is still going to be on until this thing times out. And then after 15 minutes, I'm going to set mine to the lowest. It'll turn off all the radios. Uh, not too important for regular people, but for law enforcement and, and fire and, and EMS, the first responders, they kind of want to have that so, so they could turn their engine off and everything, have the radios on all the time and then after a certain amount of time it'll turn off by itself so they can monitor stuff without having the engine on all the time but if they forget to to turn off their device no big deal this will time out and turn on turn off all their radios at the same uh, at one shot so it won't kill your battery so in this example this is face mounted so this is going to go inside the console here the whole radio is going inside the console it's small enough to fit in there these guys are too big so you're remoted, the control head is remoted and this is mounted somewhere else in the vehicle including that radio over there. Just an example of what I'm doing.